Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this sleek, streamlined, and not very good at running video games. This is dog shit, guys. Edition of 101 Facts. I am Sam, and today I'm here to talk about a technological giant comprised of app stores, black sheets of glass, and rainbow wheels of frustration. Yes, that's right, it's Apple. But what were some of Steve Jobs' most bizarre habits and actions? What secrets are hiding on your iPhone? Will I get free iPhones for the rest of my life for doing this video? <laughs> Please. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so boot up, tell Siri to hold your calls for a half hour, and prepare to take a chomp out of this juicy topic. Although don't really, it's full of wire and glass and it's actually quite dangerous. This is 101 Facts About Apple. Number one. In case you thought this was about a sorrowful, lonely little fruit sitting in a bowl all forlorn and lost, it ain't. But someone eat that guy quick smart and put him out of his misery. No, instead, this is about the technological giant Apple, which was founded in 1976 in California, yay. Number 2 Apple was born in the garage of Steve Jobs, who looks suspiciously like Ashton Kutcher and Michael Fassbender, along with co-founders Steve Wozniak, or Woz, and Ronald Wayne. Number 3 Wozniak and Jobs both had jobs at Atari. Well, that's a confusing sentence. Together they worked on the arcade game Breakout, which inspired them to break out into the home system scene. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Are you proud of me now, Mum? Number four. Apple One was the first Apple product on the market, which is only logical, really. It was rather satanically priced at $666.66, which would be the equivalent of around $3,000 today. Wozniak said that this price was just because he liked repeating digits, by the way, so don't worry, your iPhone isn't an Illuminati portal to hell. <laughs> Although there's probably an app for that anyway. Number five. These Apple One 4 kilobyte memory personal home computer kits were handmade by Wozniak using wood, of all things. Number 6. In order to gather the funds to build the first few units, which is around $1,000 by the way, Jobs had to sell his Volkswagen van. Wozniak also sold his HP 65 calculator, which, um, sounds a little bit less like a sacrifice really, but actually those things were expensive back then. Number 7. That Ronald Wayne guy I mentioned earlier left the company shortly after its birth. He sold his 10% share for $800. A good deal, I hear you think. But if he had kept that 10%, it would have been worth $75.5 billion today. Not to rub it in for the guy if he's watching, but that's a $75,499,999,200 loss. That kind of stuff does Walter White style things to a man. Number 8. The name Apple came about when Jobs was on a fruitarian diet, which is probably just about as boring for your tongue as it sounds. After coming back from an apple farm, or an orchard as they're otherwise known, he was inspired and thought the name was fun, spirited, and not intimidating. Number 9. The Beatles company Apple Corps actually sued Apple computers for trademark infringement. Aw, oh, come on guys, why don't you just come together? <laughs> The case was settled in 1981 for $80,000, which is around 8 million penny lanes. Okay, that was weak. I, I mean, I'll, I'll stop now. Number 10. This stopped Apple from entering the music business too, for a while. Interestingly though, despite this, Steve Jobs lists the Beatles as one of his biggest role models, claiming that John Lennon's work ethic inspired him to push for perfection in his company. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, I do promise I will stop now. Don't turn off. Number 11. Apple's first logo wasn't actually this at all, but this image of Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree. This looks more like a logo for cider than anything else. Number 12. As of 2013, around 63 Apple One computers are still in existence, but only six work. Because of its rarity, today's Apple Ones are auctioned at tremendously high prices. In 2016, a prototype made by Jobs himself was auctioned for $815,000. $815,000 and it's made of wood! Number 13. To give you an idea of how gargantuan this bloody company is, it's made more money than the US Treasury. In fact, nearly three times as much. Number 14. In 2014, the company was so successful in its first quarter that they made more than Amazon, Google, and Facebook combined. Suck on that, Zuckerberg, Page, and, um, Tarzan. Number 15. Apple's current California headquarters span 856,000 square feet and houses 3,000 employees. Their new HQ, the Apple Park, will cover 176 acres and cost $5 billion. And look at it! It looks like a building Tony Stark would build. Number 16. In fact, just the open area in the middle of Apple's new HQ is big enough to house the entirety of Levi's Stadium. Number 17. 
This kind of makes sense though, given that the company has over 490 stores in 17 countries and 115,000 store employees worldwide. Number 18. In 2013, one iPad was bought every second. Across the world, I mean, not just by one guy or something. Not to be outdone, the iPhone managed to sell 4.7 units per second. Again, not just one guy. Number 19. The creator of the iPod, Tony Fadell, first offered his design to a company called Real Networks as well as Philips, who both turned it down in possibly the biggest mistake ever made ever. Except for that Ronald guy from before, actually, that's probably bigger. Number 20. Hey. In one city, specifically Kunming in China, 22 fake Apple stores were discovered and closed down. The fake stores had exactly the same layout and uniform and contained replicated goods to look like Apple stuff. Now that's what I call eye fraud. Number 21. So, as you can hear, Apple has been a resounding success so far. The Chinese don't just copy any old company after all. However, no success came without a fail or two. And believe me, I should know. And one fail in particular came with the Apple Lisa in 1983. Number 22. Ooh. Apple spent four years and $50 million developing the idea of young Lisa and sold it at a price of $9,995, which is frankly a mental amount of money. Because of this price, the Lisa was unpopular and was discontinued after only 100,000 units were sold. Number 23. There have been claims that Apple creates fake projects so they can mislead other companies and the media about what they're up to, according to Adam Lashinsky's Inside Apple book. However, a report from Ars Technica claims that this is a misunderstanding in an interview with an Apple employee. Number 24. The company is, unsurprisingly, on the Fortune 500 list of big successful brands and companies, and has been on it for over 22 years. It remains ranked number three to this day. Number 25. Even though they started the company together, Wozniak and Jobs became, um, not exactly on the best of terms. Even though he's probably the name you first think of when you think of Apple, Steve Wozniak claimed in 2015 that Jobs played no role in the designs of the Apple 1 and 2, and that he just wanted to be important. Ouch, sick burn, bro. Number 26. In fact, in 1982, Time Magazine correspondent Michael Moritz followed Jobs around his business for a big article, which Jobs thought would make him Man of the Year. Instead, Mortimer named him Machine of the Year and portrayed him in a less than good light, which apparently actually made Jobs cry and made him hate the press. Number 27. Jobs was actually fired from Apple in 1985 by CEO John Scully, who was also the CEO of Pepsi, actually. Although that's nothing to brag about these days. This was down to the less than lovely sales of the Lisa and the Apple III, which was up against some stiff competition in the form of the IBM PC. Number 28. During his time away, though, Steve Jobs sure kept busy. He became majority shareholder, for example, in a little production company called The Graphic Group. If you haven't heard of it, by the way, that's because it's now under a different name, and that name is Pixar. Number 29. In fact, after Woody and Buzz first met each other and escaped an evil goth kid, Steve Jobs became the largest stockholder in the company with 50.1%. He was also on the board of directors too, and stayed as one even after Disney bought Pixar in 2006. So without him, I wouldn't have my beloved iPhone, Wally, or Bing Bong. Oh, Bing Bong. Number 30. He also founded the computer company Next, Next, which would in turn go on to make Next computers. Number 31. During 1993 to 96, the Next company went from hard to soft, and we've all been there. By which I of course mean dropping out of the hardware business and focusing on operating systems and software instead. <laughs> the company also launched WebObject, a swanky web application that big businesses such as Dell, the BBC, and Disney worked with. Number 32. In 1996, Apple expressed an interest in using Next because they were having trouble competing with one another. The idea was to replace the current software with Next's lovely stuff and, in fact, to break the narrative flow for a sec, Next Step's interface is still kind of being used today in the dock and in Finder. Oh god, you want me to see that? Uh, exit, exit. Number 33. After this, Next was bought in 1997 for $429 million and CEO Steve Jobs returned back to the apple he'd once picked off the tree of his, um, mind. Number 34. Marketing chief Phil Schiller stated in the 2013 Apple v Samsung trial, yeah, I'll get to that, that Apple did not need any more advertising. Instead, the company relies on TV shows, film, and music video product placement, and the media creating a big storm and content around any of their new products, like I'm doing right now. Oh, crikey. Number 35. 
Back in the days when they did have to advertise, though, Apple hired movie maestro responsible for the wetting of many pants, Ridley Scott, to direct the iconic 1984 TV advert for the Macintosh computer, and has since been described as a masterpiece of advertisement. Number 36. But even though they don't need advertising, Apple considers presentation of their brand so important that they hire specific packaging designers. According to Adam Lashinsky's book Inside Apple, yep, that's right, him again, some packaging designers are actually required to sit and open their boxes over and over and over again, supposedly for months. God, imagine the paper cuts. Number 37. Put that fag down, you. And by the way, I mean that in the uh, British way of cigarette, and not the other awfully offensive way. Because smoking will void the warranty of your Apple computer. According to Geek.com, many customers have complained that their faulty Apple goods have been turned down by the stores because the computer was contaminated with cigarette smoke and was considered a biohazard. Number 38. Have you ever noticed that in a great deal of iPhone adverts, the iPhone always reads 9.41am? That's because 9.41am is the time Steve Jobs announced the very first iPhone. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's a nifty little thing to notice, ain't it? Number 39. Steve Jobs and Microsoft's old Billy Gates weren't always rivals, you know. For Apple II, Microsoft had made software for the early machines, and they'd worked together on the Macintosh. Number 40. However, this rocky, frenemy, will-they-won't-they relationship, okay, maybe not that last one, went kind of sour after Bill Gates announced the first Microsoft computer in 1985. Number 41. iPods, now they're successful little bastards, aren't they? As of the end of 2014, Apple had sold 390 million iPods across the tapestry of time. The meaning of life. This may, in part, be responsible for the fact that in 2010, Apple overtook Microsoft as the most valuable technology company in the world. Yep, sorry, Gatesy boy. Number 43. But hey, of course Apple didn't want to stop there. In August of 2011, Apple replaced Exxon as the most valuable company in the world. Number 44. In fact, in 2014, Apple was worth more than the entire Russian stock market. According to Bloomberg, if you owned Apple Incorporated and sold it, you could purchase the entire stock market of Russia and still have enough change to buy every Russian an iPhone 6 Plus. Wow, free iPhones for you Russians, you lucky people! Number 45. This, by the way, is an iPad. Nice, isn't it? You'd think that this whole thing is Apple through and through, wouldn't you? Well, you would be wrong. Samsung actually manufactures the retina screen that Apple uses on its iPads. This is apparently because, according to Bloomberg, Apple asked LG and Sharp, but their screens didn't meet their high standard, leaving just Samsung available to make them. Number 46. According to Apple Insider, Samsung were also supplying around 40% of the A3 processing chips in iPhone 6 and 6 Pluses too. God, they're like little Frankenstein's monsters of tech firms. Number 47. Siri is a wonderful little thing. A little voice that delivers to me the weather for the evening and countdowns until the next Jennifer Lawrence movie comes out. So, so handy. But you, and perhaps I, should be careful about what we say to him, her, or it. Everything you say to Siri is analyzed and stored by Apple for up to two years. Number 48. It should be said, though, that what you say to Siri is kept anonymously, and rather than your name, there's a random number assigned to what you say, according to an Apple spokesperson talking to Wired. This is apparently for testing and product development purposes. Still, at least it's anonymous, so Apple don't know I talk to Siri like it's my best friend and ask for life advice, right? <laughs> oh crap, I just said it on the internet, they know now. Number 49. By the way, don't use Apple products to make nuclear missiles or chemical or biological weapons. I know it's tempting, but actually you'd violate their terms of service, as well as the Geneva Convention. The terms of service specifically say you are not to use Apple products in the development, design, manufacture, or production of nuclear missiles or chemical or biological weapons. Strangely specific rule that, I mean, just don't use anything to make those weapons. If you feel like you want to make them, just, just sit down and rethink the whole thing. Number 50. Anyway, have you ever wondered why no other phones use the iPhone's easy slide to lock method? I mean, no iPhone uses it anymore because of the updates, but still. It's because Apple had a patent on it and had legal arguments over it with Samsung. God, those two have a weird relationship, making things one minute, suing each other the next. Number 51. In fact, to add to its rogues gallery, Apple have had many legal battles with Samsung. They've had law-based fisticuffs in courts around the world, from the UK to the US, Australia, South Korea, and Japan. Number 52. Despite Apple's widespread success, some US states still don't have an Apple store. These include Montana, West Virginia, North Dakota, South Dakota, Vermont, and Wyoming. Number 53. 
In 1994, Apple was designing its Power Macintosh 7100 under the code name Carl Sagan. Because of the astronomer's catchphrase, billions and billions, tying into Apple's belief that it would make billions and billions of dollars. Very cocky. Number 54. You'd have thought that Sagan would have loved this little nickname, but he, um, didn't. As he was concerned, it sounded like an endorsement for the product on his behalf. He wrote a letter to MacWeek expressing the fact he didn't like this name, to which Apple responded by changing the codename instead to BHA, or Butthead Astronomer. Oh dear. After he heard of this, he was rather razzed off and tried to sue for libel. Number 55. The case was thrown out of court because the phrase butthead couldn't be misconstrued as fact, which is true because, well, I mean, there literally is no butt on his head. Sagan tried to sue them again for using his name in the first place, but again, failed, to which he appealed. Eventually, they settled it out of court. For this, the engineers codenamed the machine LAW instead, which is an acronym for Lawyers Are Wimps. Number 56. Apple spent $10 billion in 2016 just on the research for future products. $10 billion! They should have just asked me, I'd have done it for free, and just add I in front of things, you know, like an I vase or an I catheter. Number 57. Apple is extremely picky about who it hires to work for them. Statistically, you have a better chance of getting into Harvard than working for Apple, as just 2% of the people who applied for their New York store got a job, compared to the 7% who applied and successfully got into Harvard. Number 58. In fact, even after hiring you, Apple is very careful about letting new workers near its items. In fact, according to Adam Lashinsky, again, Apple often has new staff working on fake products until the company knows it can trust them, which, wow, must have cost a lot of money in itself. That being said, I do often do the same. Clive's been working on 101 Facts About Hanson this week, and that's not going anywhere. Number 59. All Apple staff have employee numbers. Steve Jobs got number two, and Steve Wozniak got number one. It apparently upset Steve so much that he didn't get the number one that he later took the number zero. Number Shekte. Chief Design Officer Jonathan Ive has appeared in video demonstrations of new Apple products since 2000. In every video, he has worn the same t-shirt. I assume he washes them in between. If not, ew. Number 61. According to Cult of Mac, when designers presented the first prototype iPod to Steve Jobs, he dropped it into an aquarium, the clumsy twit. Oh wait, no, sorry, that wasn't an accident. He did it to show them the air bubbles coming out of the device in the water to prove it could still be smaller. Number 62. Kind of lucky it was an aquarium, really. It could have been a hell of a lot worse, considering that, according to his biography, Steve Jobs used to wash his feet in the toilet. Apparently, it made him feel relaxed. Here's hoping he flushed first, hey? <laughs> Number 63. In other pretty weird design choices, the battery of some of the older MacBooks are apparently strong enough to be bulletproof. This was even proven on the TV show Mythbusters, although we don't envision soldiers wearing them as a vest anytime soon. Nintendo 64. Ah, the App Store, a labyrinthian marketplace of all you could ever need from your devices, right? Well, apparently not, according to Phone Arena. 60% of all apps in the App Store have never, ever been downloaded. That's over 400,000 apps created for literally no reason, just sitting there. Including mine, where I soothe you to sleep by singing a Robbie Williams song of your choice. I can't believe that hasn't been downloaded at least once yet. You've got stars direct in your fate. Number 65. An 11-year-old boy from Lancashire ranked up a $6,000 bill from buying add-ons from the App Store for games such as Smurf Village. Wow, that kid must have loved that village. Number 66. Even Kanye West had this problem with his daughter, as evidenced by a meltdown on Twitter. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure why I find that funny. Number 67. In 2014, Apple agreed to pay $32.5 million of compensation to parents in the US for not putting a parent lock on purchase products for cases such as this. Number 68. The most downloaded free app on the iOS store is Pokemon Go, to pretty much nobody's surprise. In terms of most downloaded for paid apps, however, that honor goes to Minecraft Pocket Edition. Number 69. Ooh. In the 1980s, specifically 86, Apple branched away from electronics and moved into the most obvious industry for a tech giant, fashion. Their clothing line included some pretty lovely sweaters and some pretty fetched tops. However, the business quickly died. Perhaps rightfully so. Mercy killing, if anything. Number 70! 
Except for these clothes, of course. Apple products are so popular in Japan that one guy started queuing for the iPhone 6 a whopping seven months before its release. Seven months! And I thought us Brits were pros at queuing. Number 71. But it wasn't always that way. Apple's name recognition and brand were so low in Japan when it first came out that when the first Macs were brought over to the country, the delivery men met them with refrigerated trucks, assuming they were transporting fruit. Fair enough, really. They are called Apple, so... Number 72. If you think that's bad, before 2013, iPhones could not even be marketed properly in Brazil. Another company already sold a phone under the trademark iPhone, a phone that, as an additional insult, ran on Android. Number 73. The iPod gets its name from the 2001 A Space Odyssey's famous line, Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Now I'm kind of annoyed that the iPhone's voice is called Siri and not Hal, although actually a bit of me is relieved because otherwise I'd be worried it's going to kill me all the time. Number 74. The average salary at Apple HQ is a staggering $125,000 a year. Generous, although Apple can afford it. They do make $300,000 a minute after all. Number 75. If Apple was a country, its annual revenue would make it the 55th richest country in the world according to The Atlantic. As in, the website The Atlantic. That's bigger than Kenya, Ecuador and Paraguay. Paraguay! Number 76. The situation is so polarised that the nine highest paid executives earned a total of $441 million compensation in 2011. According to the Economic Policy Institute, this is more than 95,000 of the workers at the Foxconn factory where Apple products, among others, are made, get paid combined. Number 77. In 2016, the EU decided that the deal Apple had made with Ireland to pay less tax was a little bit less than legal. They ordered the company to pay $14.5 million in back taxes. Woohoo! Wow, I'd hate to be in the offices when that was announced. Mood killer. Number 78. Apple transports all its products by air rather than shipping them by a boat or train or carrier pigeon. This method is apparently much faster, allowing products to reach stores quicker when needed. Number 79. The company runs its own internal business school too, called Apple University. Its dean, Joel Badolny, used to work for both Harvard and Yale. That's a spiffing resume right there. Number 80. iTunes enjoyed a landmark 25 billionth song to be downloaded in 2013. The lucky customer was Philip Lupke from Germany, who won a $13,000 gift card for his trouble. <laughs> I wonder what the song he downloaded was. Number 81. Ah oh, yes, I just found it. The song was called Monkey Drums by Chase Bush. No, I've never heard of it either. Number 82. In case you were worried about what other milestones there were, the 25th million was Let It Snow by Frank Sinatra and the one billionth song to be downloaded on the iTunes store was Speed of Sound by Coldplay. Lights go on at the speed of sound. Yeah, that one. Number 83. Apple is getting into the energy business, apparently. Their facilities in Oregon, Nevada and California generate enough excess renewable energy that Apple plans to sell it onto its customers in the near future. Think of that, your house could be powered by people asking Siri advice on where to buy an energy plan. <laughs> the irony. Number 84. Hey, speaking of Siri, if you ask them the meaning of life, they'll have many different answers, one of which is 42. A reference that I make every single week on 101 Facts to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Number 85! Siri also replies with a Lego Batman flavoured phrase if you address him as Hey Computer too. And you don't even have to do the voice either. Number 86. Also, if you tell Siri you're drunk, which I do often, don't worry, I don't have a problem, it's just for recreation, a button saying call me a taxi will automatically appear. Neat, huh? It doesn't automatically buy you dominoes though, which is a shame because that, and crying about what I did the night before, is my hangover cure. Number 87. According to Time Magazine, each Apple store on average costs between $8.5 to $10 million to actually open, and that isn't even including the lease. Number 88. I should probably calm down. Apple stores get around 1 million visitors every day, making an average per year of, you guessed it, 365 million people. Number 89. The iPhone made Apple $74 billion in 2012. That's more money than the entirety of Microsoft made that year, which was $73 billion. Number 90. Despite being one of the company's founders, Steve Jobs only took $1 a year in salary, which seems to be the hip new way of displaying your fabulously wealthy. Don't feel too bad for him though, he did okay for himself just in his Apple stock, which was valued at $1.84 billion. 
Number 91. Steve Jobs described taking LSD as one of the two or three most important things he ever did. He was such an advocate of the psychedelic drug, he even praised it in the Pentagon, admitting he'd taken the drug as many as 15 times. Maybe that's why he's using a toilet as a foot spa. Number 92. We've all been angry at the iPhone's short battery life. However, at least that power comes cheap. Fully charging your iPhone every day for a year will only add 25 cents to your electricity bill. Number 93. Apple will now never pay for product placement in films or TV shows. However, they will provide free iPhones and computers to any studios who want to feature their product on screen. Damn it, I knew I should have been in front of camera for this one. Balls, I could have got a free iWatch. Number 94. This tactic has worked out rather well. In the film Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, for example, Apple products received eight total minutes of screen time. That would have cost most advertisers $23 million, but Apple got it pretty much for free. Number 95. iPhones, iPads, and iPhone gift cards are not allowed to be used as part of any third-party promotion. This means it's technically illegal to have giveaways or competitions where people can win any of these products. Well, I was going to give one away at the end of this video, but now, no. Don't want any jail time. Number 96. In 2012, a 17-year-old boy in China made the news after he sold his kidney in return for an iPad and an iPhone. Five people were later arrested on the charge of participating in the illegal organ trade. Did he get the phone, though? I, I guess that's not the important bit, actually. Number 97. Mac vs PC, or Get a Mac, was the humorous advertising campaign between 2006 and 2009 that starred Justin Long as Mac and John Hodgman as PC. In it, the two would enact situations as the two computers, sort of, with the Mac being far more laid back and cool and escaping most situations unscathed. Number 98. The UK version of this contains peep show comedy duo David Mitchell and Robert Webb. Black Mirror creator Charlie Brooker called their inclusion weird because, to quote him, in Peep Show, David Mitchell plays a repressed neurotic underdog and Webb plays a selfish shove regarding poser. So when you see the ads, you think PCs are a bit rubbish yet ultimately lovable, whereas Macs are just smug, preening tossers. His words, guys, not mine. Guess I'm a tosser then. Whoops. Number 99. The Japanese version of these ads instead contain the comedy duo The Ramans. Number 100. The Mac Portable was the company's first portable machine released in 1989, but it weighed 16 pounds. It wasn't until the PowerBook 100 in 1991, which weighed less than 8 pounds, that we finally had a portable computer that wouldn't break your bloody back to carry around. Number 101! Another weird thing that Macs can do for you is be your therapist. If you open up Terminal and type in Emacs, press Shift Escape, press X, and type Doctor, your very own therapy session starts. I'm not sure I would follow its advice, though. It certainly hasn't helped me in my pursuit of Jen. Oh, Jen, not even AI will let me into your heart. Ah, oh, we'll find a way. We always do. We always do. Import. All right, so that was 101 Facts about Apple, and I don't know about you, but I had a lovely time. Also, if you want more 101 Facts videos, like I really want some iTunes vouchers or a new phone or a new iPad, new watch, any Apple product, please click on subscribe right now. And you'll get, you know, all sorts of new one-on-one -on -one videos. And if you click the bell, you get notifications when they come. Absolutely amazing stuff, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> watch this video too. This video is really good, as is this one. Or click on me to subscribe. Like I just said, uh, you don't have to, you can click on me here or down there. It doesn't matter. I'll just stare at you for a while while you choose what to do. Hmm. What are you gonna do? Hmm? This one, this one, this one? Not that, I mean the subscribe button.